messing in the plants today a little bit. Howdy. Where you go? Don't hit my camera. That's my baby. Um, I wish my GoPro was working, but it's not. It's working, but it's not. The files, something wrong with the files that comes off of it. I don't know what it is. Oh. Uh, But I got a story. I don't think I ever told it before. Don't you break that? Are you bored? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Where are you going with that? I get nervous every time I see him with my toes and stuff. He's got a habit of not putting them back where he found them. Ain't that right? Huh? Don't do that. Is your mama asleep? Oh, yeah. No. Is Donovan asleep? No. Well. You make me nervous standing behind me, son. But that's okay. I can deal with it. Who did the car? Yeah, that's my baby. A diamond playing over there. There's Bailey. There's Bailey. Come in. Come in. Say hello to my people. Say hello to my baby. Yes, my baby girl. Yes, my baby. And my baby girl. The first dog I ever had, her name was, uh, her name was, uh, Lady, and she was a beagle, and I must have been about 12 or 13, uh, my Uncle Jack gave her to me. She was a pure bad beagle, but she, her legs were too long. So Uncle Jack, he didn't want to keep her, and he had a whole litter of beagle puppies. So he gave me Lady. And me and Daddy and Carolyn was living in <sighs> Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I didn't have a place I could keep her out in the yard, so we kept her in the basement. I mean, I took her out and stuff, but I kept her in the basement. And there were some steps going down in the house, going down in the basement. And I don't know why, I tied her up. I didn't have a collar. I put a rope around her neck and I tied her up to one of the posts there in the basement. I don't know why I tied her up. And, um, uh, One day, I put her down in the basement and I had her tied up. And 
she decided to walk up the steps a little bit. And um, and that's that's when she died. Uh, she she fell through the steps going up. She fell through there and hung herself. When she fell through the steps, she was about a foot off of the ground. She couldn't touch the ground, and she hung herself. Um, first dog I ever had. Uh, Daddy found her. He found her. He didn't even let me know about it till after it was all said and done, and he took her outside somewhere and buried her. So I cried a lot. I sure did like that girl. Oh. Her name was Lady. Uh, they, um, my family used to get together in Roanoke Rapids and have a big dinner and everything on Thanksgiving. And this was, and and on Thanksgiving they get together and they, everybody gets up their beagle dogs, and we hit the woods. There must have been twenty people or so spread out apart in a line, and we get our dogs. And we have the dogs turn loose in front of us, and they're all sniffing around. And a thing about a rabbit, a wild rabbit, if you jump one, it's going to take off running. And what it does, it runs in a big, huge circle and comes right back around to pretty close to the spot that you jumped it. And we knew that. We knew that. So when the dogs jumped it, they'd run it. And eventually that rabbit would come right back around towards us. And we're all standing there with a tobacco stick. A tobacco stick is a stick that they hung tobacco on in the tobacco barn. The stick's about three and a half, four foot long. And we would wait for them to come around and we wouldn't do anything but we'd hold that stick and hit that rabbit in the head as it come around and kill it. Well, I like to do it, but I didn't, I wouldn't kill them. If I had a shot at one, I'd miss it on purpose. <laughs> if a rabbit's coming right straight at you and everybody's seeing where it's at, And then holler, hit it from the front, Mikey. <laughs> and I would hit it, hit at it, and I would go straight down. And you and it, and you'll miss that rabbit every time when you hit it straight down. So that's how I got out of killing them. You have to hit it. You have to go at an angle and get, swing to it. 
as it's coming to you, you don't wait till it gets right in front and try to hit it. You swing to it to meet it, to stun it or kill it. And I act like I didn't know no better. I let that rabbit go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Uh, I used to fake all kind of stuff like that when I was, uh, I'd go squirrel hunting with Frankie. He'd give me three or four shells. I had uh, like a 410 shotgun. And he'd go all through the woods, and I'd go all through the woods. And if I heard him shooting, I know he done killed another squirrel. And I had to make him think I was trying to kill him. I didn't want to kill him. And I'd, I'd load a shell, I'd load a shell, and I'd point the thing up in the air at nothing and fire off around to make it make everybody think I was not I was trying to kill a squirrel. Same thing on rabbit hunting, jumping a rabbit with a shotgun. I'd jump a rabbit and I'd shoot way above it trying to kill I never killed nothing. Never killed nothing. I it just wasn't in me to kill an animal. Now, I suppose if that's all I had to eat, I might kill one. Grandma used to ring chicken. That, that just tore me up to see her kill a chicken like that. I couldn't kill a chicken. Now, one time, one time, I, I uh, uh, was raising uh, New Zealand rabbits. And uh, I was raising some for, I was raising registered rabbits. You know, I had chocolate ducks, I had uh, New Zealand whites, I had several different breeds that I raised. I even had some that was in Angora. And I had some I was raising for meat. This guy talked me into doing that, and he fed me some one time that he had made up and everything. And um, he made rabbit sausage. Uh, and it tasted pretty good. So he talked me into raising the bout. I think I, I, I think I had like 15 or 20. Cause I was raising for meat and was going to slaughter them and store them away, you know, in the freezer or something. And the day come to slaughter them things, I thought I could do it. And you pick them up. And you hit them in the back of the head real hard to kill them. And then you slaughter them out. Well, I picked that one. <laughs> I picked that one. And I hit it. But I hit it. Real easy. I didn't want to hurt it. <laughs> You're going to kill it, but you don't want to hurt it. <laughs> and when I hit it, it squealed. <laughs> I didn't know a rabbit could squeal, and it squealed. <laughs> and it won't dead. And I tapped it up for more time, and it squealed. <laughs> And I called my friend up to talk me into that. I said, come get, 
I can't kill these rabbits. And, uh, <laughs> so he come over directly and he, he killed them and he slaughtered them and he cleaned them and everything. And it looked very nice. Put them in the freezer. He made me some rabbit sausage. And, <laughs> and meanwhile, my wife is really upset about it, too. <laughs> and she said, I ain't eating them things. <laughs> and what's he barking at? And after a while, after a couple of months, uh, <laughs> I called my friend. I said, do you want these rabbits you did for me? <laughs> he said, you mean you ain't eating? I said, no, and I don't guess we are. <laughs> and so he come over and got them. <laughs> he was glad to get them. <laughs> Could not do it. Folks, I just couldn't do it. Um, my daddy-in-law, he loved boomers. Yes, he did. He loved hunting them things. And I, I had to eat some at family reunions and stuff, but I didn't, it wasn't particularly nothing great. I'd used to eat them in Brunswick's. Oh, maybe y'all don't know what a boomer is. A boomer is a squirrel. And that's what hillbillies call them, boomers. But my grand, my, my, my daddy-in-law, he loved them squirrels. And he'd take a squirrel that he caught and killed. He'd skin that thing off and gut it and clean it and everything, cut the feet off and the tail off, he would leave the head on. And he'd so he'd have a pot there and he'd have three or four squirrels, whole squirrels down in that pot with some kind of seasoning stuff on them and boil them and cook them. And he had the head on because he liked the brains. Uh, I looked in that pot and I seen them whole squirrels, eyes open, boiling in that pot. Boy, that just, <laughs> that just, uh, was crazy. I, I couldn't stand that. And my daddy and I also liked snowbirds. Now here in Florida, we talk about snowbirds. Snowbirds are people from up north that come down to Florida for the winter. But a snowbird, I forget the correct name of the bird, but it's a bird you see a lot in the winter time, especially when it's snowing. And that's why they call them snowbirds. Pretty little bird, wasn't big as wasn't big as nothing. Wasn't even as big as a dove. And and Daddy had a little trap thing, and he'd sit out back and walk, and when it was snow on the ground, and watch some snowbirds come, and he had seed and stuff around, and sneed up under that box. And he'd get two, three under that box eating that seed, and he'd jerk that little twine he had fast to it, and catch them, and kill them, and eat them. I mean, they weren't big as, they were like, they wasn't big. Beautiful little bird. Kind of a grayish, uh, whitish color. They were pretty birds. I would never eat one, but he would eat a snowbird in a heartbeat. Uh, I've, I've 
never known I think I known them one time to have a possum to cook it. He called a possum. Eat that. I wasn't eating that. I wouldn't eat a raccoon. Um, but people eat a lot of different things, you know, and I, some people like, well, they call them mountain oysters. And what it is, is the testicles, the balls from a hog from a cow, uh, from buffalo, call them mountain oysters. No thank you. I don't, I don't want no balls. <laughs> no sir. <laughs> I don't want no mountain oysters. And, uh, and I can remember Way back in the day, Daddy and Mama would fix pork brains with eggs and stuff for breakfast. And I used to eat it. I liked it, I think. But as I got older, I didn't like the idea of eating brains. And you can buy pork brains in the store today. I don't know about balls. Don't know about that. And I love liver smothered in gravy and onions. I love liver. But that's only if I don't have to prepare it and fix it and all that stuff. That is disgusting bloody real I, I, uh, uh, I lose my appetite when I see it like that now I love it fixed and me not having no, nothing to do with it <laughs> and my mama used to fix cornbread she didn't bake it she fried it She'd have kneaded it up into like a big ball of flour or something with milk or bread on it. And, uh, but she'd make, make cornbread that was fried. That's the only cornbread I like. I will eat baked cornbread occasionally. But it rarely ever gets fixed around here. Now my my wife, she loved she loved cornbread and milk. She'd take and put her a cake of cornbread in a glass of milk and sit there and spoon eat that. She loved it. <laughs> Not me. Not me. Now I love I love uh, vanilla wafers. I like to put a handful of vanilla wafers in the glass and pour milk, milk over it and spoon eat that. I haven't had any of that in a long time. What's he doing over there? Tracy's got... She, I wonder how many grandkids she's got. I don't know. There's a lot going on over there. She has company a lot. Of course, her brother lives right next door to her, too. Um, <laughs> uh, people eat some strange stuff. Now, I used to love pig's feet, pickled pig's feet. And then I, I don't know, I just got to where I didn't like them anymore. Didn't I, didn't, I used to didn't like jalapenos. I love the mild, the tame jalapenos. That's them plants that I got over there that grow in them mild ones. I love them to death. And uh, and I've noticed, I've kind of, for some reason, 
I've kind of acquired the taste for the regular jalapenos. I had a pepper plant over there. I, I didn't know if it was the mild or the or the regular strong one. And I cut one off and I tasted that thing a little bit. I said, that's, that's, that's the regular, that's the hot one. And that gun, if I didn't sit there and finish eating that thing, and it it was hot, but I liked it. So what's going on with that? Does your taste change? You know, uh, things I used to like, some of the things I used to like, I don't like anymore. So I, I, I don't know, but I'll tell you what, back in the day when Grandma on Sunday morning would go out there and grab a couple of chickens, sometimes she'd just grab them by the feet and lay them down on the log and chop their head off, and sometimes she'd just grab them by the head and wring their neck and kill them. And but it, when dinner was served, I loved her fried chicken. I loved it. The only thing about Sunday dinner at Grandma's, my Grandma Pearson, um, there's usually about five or six adults there and maybe five or six kids. Well, we had to sit around outside. The adults got to eat first. Then when they got done, they brought the kids in, set us down and told us to have at it. But sometimes, sometimes there wasn't enough chicken to go around to the kids. And most of the time, most of the time it was wings and thighs. Now, if my mama was there, if there was any wings left, you, you was lucky because she loved them wings. She loved those wings. <laughs> uh, gosh, what a... <laughs> That wasn't right, you know, everybody should be able to eat at the same time, but to put us out, you know, and when everybody was staying over, we never got beds. We had to sleep on the floor on the blanket. Yes, we did. Go right around there and look at that lake that I was telling you about. Where are you going? Anyway, folks, we still got a water. The water got fixed, but it's running okay in the bathrooms. But it's just barely dripping in the kitchen. Anyhow, that's my story, folks. That's it for this video. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And I might add, I love my daughter, and I love Donovan and Jaden. So, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.